There were times, bro, when I was just like, you know what? I've been fighting for this long. I, I ain't got no more in me. And she was like, I got a little bit. I was like, all right, well, let's see. And that's why we still rocking today because yeah. she was just like, okay, you've been coming to us all these years, but now that you battle weary, I'm ready to tap in. Everybody don't have that yeah. privilege. Sometimes it's like, hey, when I'm ready to tap out, she ready to tap out, he ready to tap out, and then we tapped out. Like, it happens. But, you know, it's it's a process, and entrepreneurship can be hard along. Yeah. Bro, marriage can be hard along. Yeah. Bro, parenting can be hard along. Mm-hmm. When you put all them suckers together, yeah. That's why I don't be staying up weeknights till twelve, one o'clock in the morning. Cause I'm like, yo, it's already hard to be a great father yeah. to a daughter that's gorgeous. Yeah. Bro, your daughter's gorgeous. They yeah, like to kick it sure. together, yeah, right? Kick it, yeah. So it's like it's it's hard enough to be, you know what I'm saying, faithful to one wife, right, yeah. bro? You know what I'm saying? And not catch attitudes when she's having a rough day. Like, yeah. like those things can be hard enough to grow business and like, okay, we hit these numbers, can we hit three million? Can we add more? Like, that's hard enough. Yeah. And so when you put all of it together, I just tell people, man, take your time, pace yourself, do the best you can do with what you have, uh-huh. and then continue to grow from there. And then whatever blind spots you see, like I'm telling you, brother, like the counseling I did internally mm-hmm. was a game changer. Are you ready? We're gonna run the yeah. play. Let's Do you go. know what it's like to come for nothing at all? But every day you just wanting it all. Do you know what it's like? Every day facing your fear, but believing that your blessing is near. Do you know what it's like? Growing up broken than most, but still being devoted the most. Do you know what it's like? Yeah, that's what the journey's about. Yeah. Let me show you What's going on, y'all? This is Justin Owens, back in the Runner Play Show, where I help break down the top plays of success from top leaders, entrepreneurs, and personalities by sharing gems from their personal playbook. And today, I'm excited, man. I got a great friend of mine. He's a best-selling author. He's a speaker. He's an entrepreneur. Uh, he's a philanthropist, but he's also a husband and a father. Uh, and uh, he's one of the best speakers that I know uh, in the game. My brother, Mr. Jeremy Anderson. What's How you up, doing, man? How you Welcome to the locker room, man. Thank Bless you for having man. me, bro. Thank you, man. I'm glad, glad you came, man. Yes, sir. I think this is a necessary conversation. Let's get it. Yeah. Um, and I'll start with something, I'll start with something kind of fun because I made a post uh, recently. That, you uh-huh. know, some people was, hey, they feel some kind of way about it. I was like, yo, <laughs> just because you speak loud don't mean you're a motivation mm-hmm. speaker, right? Like, what mm-hmm. What are your thoughts on that? Because, you know, I've seen some people that's like, oh, just talk loud. I'm like, that ain't the only quality right. that's required. That's important, like, to right. be able to communicate. What are your thoughts on that? I want to talk to the speaker himself. So, so first off, I tell people all the time, there are different types of speakers. You can okay. be a motivational speaker, inspirational speaker, a professional speaker, a keynote speaker, a trainer, mm. like, in corporate. Like, so there are different type of talks that people will hire you for. Got it. But just because you have something to say don't mean that it's worth hearing. Yeah. And just because you have something to say don't mean that it's worth being paid for. Mm. And sometimes, you know, they often say the loudest in the room are oftentimes the weakest. Wow. So there are some people that's really really loud and really really passionate but yeah. you ain't really talking about nothing yeah yeah and so you know i think you know when you look at et yeah big bro to both no, of us sure. right no. he's loud but he's got depth he's got so much there's substance. levels to it he's an anoint there's an yeah. anointing there yeah, yeah, yeah. right he's been doing it for 30 years yep. and so some people look at him like yo if i just go up there with passion like bro they're not gonna pay you top dollar <laughs> no nah. for pay- now it might work for a fifth grade yeah. little you know saying pop warner football team yeah yeah yep. but when you really start getting to that next level the more depth you have the more they're gonna pay you yeah yeah because i and that's really what i was saying like yo you, you gotta understand like your voice is like a, a instrument you Absolutely. know and you got to know how to use it for, for a sure. different Things like for if sure. I'm hosting an event, it's one for thing. For sure. If I'm speaking it one way, if I'm training, this I'm, I'm, I'm communicating a different way. Podcast in a different way, you know. For sure. And 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 I feel like there are a lot of people that also they like, man, I do want to become a speaker. And so mm-hmm. you touched on a lot of different um, types of speakers. How would you say a person would identify what type of speaker they are? I think it depends on the market, right? Okay. So if somebody's going to be speaking to youth yep. or in universities. You're not a corporate trainer. You're not, you know, say a lecturer. You're not yeah. doing keynotes. Yeah. You give a more of a motivational, inspirational talk. Yeah. All right. But then when you go cross over into corporate, it mm-hmm. could be professional. It could be a corporate talk. It could be a keynote speaker. It really just kind of depends on the audience. So I would tell people before they figure out what kind of speaker do I have to be, what do you have to say? What's your story? What value can you add? And what audience will most resonate with it? Mm. So for me, when I first started 13, 14 years ago, on my website, I had a corporate tab. I had a faith tab for churches. Then I had a school tab. Yep. And I was kind of like, a, E.T. was like, bro, you like a handyman. <laughs> I choose one lane. Yep. And focus and brand that, but your gifts will make room for you. Yeah. So okay. for me, I had to say, all right, well, I love corporate because that corporate bag hit a little different. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Sure. Yeah. I love schools. I ain't yeah. going to lie. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. I love schools, but I also love preaching the gospel. I had to ask myself, okay, what helps me make the biggest impact in this season? Mm. And so for me, 
a decade ago, I was just like, you know what, going all in in the educational space yeah. with the young people, colleges, high schools, universities, like that's going to help me go to the next level. And that's where I can add the most value in that season. Then I recently transitioned over to corporate. Got it. And I know at this point you you do events where you like train speakers to become right, speakers. For sure. How, if I'm listening to this right now, I'm like, okay, no, that's, you know, I could learn a lot of different courses, all this kind of stuff, but like, I really want to become a speaker. How do I go from, okay, I'm working a job or I've got XYZ going on to not transition to being full time? Mm -hmm. Were you able to make that transition or you just say one day, hey man, I'm just going, going all in? What so crazy process? thing about my story, bro, is I started off speaking part time, okay. churches here or there, organizations, schools, yeah. like whatever opportunities I would get. Mm -hmm. I did that for about two years, two and a half years. And then one day this lady in my church was like, can you come to my middle school? I said, sure. I pull up, I spoke. Mm -hmm. And after it's like 500 kids afterwards, it was one little girl, red hair, freckles. She in seventh grade, she was in crying. She was in tears. She was like, bro, oh. you changed my life. And I was thinking like, bro, my story ain't that deep. You know what I'm saying? She's <laughs> yeah. like, no, I plan on committing suicide. She was like, my father, he abuses me, and my best friend committed suicide, and that's the one person I could talk to. Hmm. She was like, but now I came to school with a plan, tried to slip out the back door. They caught me, made me come to the stupid assembly, but I'm so glad I did, Mr. Jeremy. Then she looks her arm, and she was like, because now I know weapons will form, but they won't prosper. Wow. I'm more than a conqueror. You know how kids be writing on their yeah. arm. She looked up. She's like, now I know I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. I'm like, yo, she writing down the quotes and scriptures I'm giving in my presentation. So she, with tears in her eyes, bro, she was like, I want to live. Well, I want to live, Mr. Jeremy. Gave me a big hug and ran off, bro. That messed me up. Hmm. And at that moment, I decided to quit my job. Wow. Walked away from great money. Me and my wife both made the sacrifice. Walked away from six figures, health care, benefits, retirement plan, because we felt like, man, I could ch I could save somebody's life. Yeah. I knew the money was going to come on the back end. Yeah. Like I'm not I'm not I'm not chasing, you know what I'm saying? Paper. I'm chasing purpose. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. The money's the the wealth we have is the byproduct of us adding value to people's lives. Correct. So that's so for me, I had two years of experience. But then I went all in and quit my job. But now I train and teach people on how to be intentional about it. I've always lived below my means, bro, yeah. way below. So mm -hmm. I had a nice savings. So yeah. I wasn't even like, what am I going to do? I, I got, I could live the next however long yeah. off of what we have saved. Yeah. But if I could put all my focus into mm -hmm. speaking. So I told you all the time, when you first start speaking, you got a full-time job. You don't need to just make enough to cover your bills, but enough to put back in your company and your yeah. business because you got to keep investing yourself. You still investing yeah, yourself. I'm sure. investing in myself still, even at this state. So I tell people, do the best you can. Do your marketing. Do your branding. Get yourself out there as a speaker. And as you're getting these opportunities, don't eat your seeds. Got it. That's the yeah. biggest mistake people yeah. make. They mm -hmm. get that first $2,500, $5,000 check. They think they yeah. balling. Yep. I'm like, man, I won't even get on the phone for you for yeah. five minutes, yeah. for $5,000. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's just like save that, put it back in your business. Mm. And then when you get to a point, because I believe there's a thing called occupational integrity. Okay. Occupational integrity. When you get to a point where you really feel like, I mean, I'm taking a salary from this company, mm -hmm. but my side hustle, my side business, my side speaking career is doing so good. I, mean, I feel like it's affecting my work. Wow. I feel like I'm actually robbing them. Yeah. And I'm getting a few opportunities. That's when you know, because it's not cool to yeah. take work from somebody. Integrity. Occupational integrity, bro. Jeez. You know what I'm saying? So it's like there's a time where you got to say, okay, I'm going to have to walk away from this job because I'm really not with integrity. I'm not doing them what they pay me for mm -hmm. because I'm putting so much focus here. What's up? This is Justin Owens from The Play Show. And listen, this episode is being brought to you by BetterHelp. Give online therapy a trial at betterhelp.com forward slash RTP and get on your way to being your best self. Y'all heard me talk about it before. We're talking about divorce. We're talking about business challenges. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And then as an entrepreneur, I think you deal with multiple things on multiple fronts. And even more so if you're a leader, because now not only are you dealing with your own stuff, but now you're having to deal with and cope with other people's things. And listen, um, I don't care if it's your career, your relationships. Therapy helps you stay connected to what you really want while you navigate life so you can move forward with confidence and excitement and in many ways be able to help others. But I think the most important thing is having the skills and the tools to help you navigate and practice so that you get better at doing it over and over and over again. And listen, it empowers you to be the best version of yourself. So if you're thinking about therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's convenient, flexible, it works around your schedule, and it's simple. You go online, you fill out a questionnaire, you get matched up with a licensed therapist, and then you can switch to therapists at no additional cost if you want to. So listen, let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash RTP to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash RTP. Y'all go run the play. But that means on this side, on your speaking business, it's starting to boom. 
And that's where you begin to put your focus. Got so it. I show people how to cross over. So my man b rag and I brag on one of my students. Yeah. Bro, Brad out in um, Jersey, my man, the first year was working for this organization, bro. He was getting COVID. He was getting assaulted like by the, the people. That, bro, it was, it was crazy stuff, bro. Mm. My man was able to quit his job. The next year, my man did like $70,000 in six months and took off the next six months to be home with his wife and newborn baby. Wow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so it's a science. It's yeah. a science to it. Yeah. So now not only is he making an impact, but he got his time back. Yeah. And he's able to give his time back to his family. It's beautiful thing, That's bro. That's beautiful. Yeah. And now, I never thought about this. Because you, you, you said something about, like, even as a speaker, you got to reinvest into yourself. Mm -hmm. So, like, in, in the traditional business, okay, like, you know, new ACEO's clothing line, right? Mm -hmm. So we get clothes made. Mm -hmm. People buy it. I'm like, okay, we got to reinvest into more inventory. Mm -hmm. Translate that for me now in the speaking world. Okay, so I get a speaking gig. I get paid five, ten thousand dollars. How do I know what's mine? Because it's not like the inventory. So like, you, I know you said investing into like branding and marketing. What does that look like as a speaker? So so updating your website. Okay. Um, new EPKs, um, videographers, EPKs. photo shoots. Yeah, electronic press kit. Okay, okay. okay. <laughs> so it's like the digital. It's like yeah, the yeah. digital board. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like a website. You can just link to somebody. Yep. You can send a link to somebody. They can see your EPK. Uh, but then a lot of it, man, is the flights and the hotel for your team. Got it. So if I got a big gig and I'm about to speak in Sacramento and I need my videographer to travel with me, well, not only do I have to pay him for his time and to yeah. edit afterwards, yep. but I also got to pay for his flight. Yep. I also got to pay for his hotel. But some people be penny pinching. Yep. And it's like, well, I'm going to say that's 2500 yep. And it's like, all right, well, now you don't have that footage, which yep. could have eventually put you in the position that you can make 25000 Right. So the most brilliant thing I did was early on, I've always had a videographer. Matter of yep. fact, I just got a reel today. Yep. I sent my man an extra 1000 just for him to update the reel. Yep. He didn't do a whole new one. He just just updated it yep. and sent it back to me because I had a crazy gig in Vegas and we'll talk about that maybe later but uh -huh. bro it was absolutely bonkers MGM grand like it was epic and so I took that footage to strengthen my current reel ah, now I'm already do I've been doing seven figures before the pandemic even yeah. hit speaking uh -huh. right but I'm still strengthening my stuff so mm -hmm. I tell people all the time like yeah you got your first 5,000 I know you want to take your wife on a trip but invest a lot of that some of that back into your business to put you in an even better position hmm I like mm -hmm. that. Now, we were kind of talking about something earlier. AI. Everybody talks about AI. Right? Yeah, yeah. What are your thoughts on AI and the future of speaking? So, so me and you both are men of faith, and I know how this thing going to wrap up. And nowhere yeah. in the world does it say that AI is going to destroy the world. So yeah, I'm not yeah. as concerned, but I am concerned because it's like, okay, <laughs> this is weird what it can do yeah, yeah. and what it can learn. So I do think we need to really govern that. But as far as the technology and us having – less time, more people for us CEOs and entrepreneurs, yeah. it's actually a plus, and there are a lot of people that can learn coding. So I think AI right now is a good thing Yeah. Um, because a lot of it is just like service-based. Correct. It ain't really just running the world and having access to all of our data, technology, yeah. and banking information, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So it's service-based. So I think the AI is actually a good thing, and it's sweet for speakers yeah, it is. because it ain't you can't, you can't AI – yeah. My message. Can't. You can't AI my story. Mm -hmm. You can't AI my pain. Right. You know what yeah. I'm saying? My suffering, my adversity, the, the core principles I've learned. Yep. You can't fabricate that. Now, Chat GPT or some of the other cute little AIs, they might be able to put together a nice little speech or say something that feels good, yep. but that's not a living, breathing person yep. that went through that pain, that went through the persecution, that went through that heartbreak, that went through that molestation, that divorce, that foreclosure, that car getting repossessed, that depression, that diagnosis from the doctor. Like, that's real stuff that real people go through. So when I see AI, I'm like, like, yep, I told my team we got 20 plus employees. I'm like, let's figure out how we can use this to strengthen our day to day efforts. But I sleep good at night knowing that AI ain't going to never replace what I can do when I stand on yeah, stage. That's a fact. I, I tell people, like, look, I don't think until I call a company and don't keep pushing zero to talk to a person, <laughs> right. you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't care. I'm like, I don't care how many people, the little virtual joints, right, 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 right. be on the phone with somebody. Right, you know what I'm saying? Because there's, there's some things, like you're saying, even like speaking that. Sometimes people have to hear it from a person. Absolutely. And it's some stuff that, like, sometimes you're going to do, like, yesterday I was going to do some stuff with some flights. I'm like, yo, the little virtual boy can't help me. I need right. I need somebody to understand Facts. how it feels to be sitting at the airport Facts. for two days. I don't, I don't know if AI is going to be able to do that. Maybe. So so when we get to the point where we just don't care how people feel, right. I think I think it'll be important. But I feel like it's what you said. It's like, me as a person, I can take your same speech mm -hmm. and give it, and it still would hit the same. Why? Come on, bro. Because you ain't lived it. Because right. I ain't go through it. You know what I'm saying? And I see people right. do it. I, I, know, I, know you see, I know you see people. I'm like, bro, 
Yeah, okay. But I'll be watching stuff on YouTube, like, bro, that's my exact speech. Yeah, like, yeah. I know you was in the audience. <laughs> but I just caught you out right there. Yeah, but it's but you know people don't be able to say it don't hit the same, right? Because you haven't gone through right. you know, those uh, those 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 challenges in life life uh, experiences. Yeah. All right, so let like you know we we'll, we'll get back to talking business in just a second. I want to talk on because you're a man of faith, mm -hmm. and I want to talk on maybe like a little bit of like you know we always talk about like fitness routine. Mm -hmm. Can you give us shed some light into like your spiritual routine? Um, something mm -hmm. that's because obviously you know you've been a husband and father and owner business owner you've done a lot of things well mm -hmm. you kind of shed some light into that so I've just I've just learned man you know God told me years ago like because I built a gym at the crib right you've seen it mm -hmm. God was like yeah don't focus on the physical until you work on the spiritual mm -hmm. so every morning I get up around four o'clock that's my time with God because I don't want to rush it yeah so whether it's 45 minutes or whether it's an hour and a half I got plenty of time that's okay. where I get my assignment for the day. Okay. Because, bro, that's, that's still a monster inside me. Yeah. Like, don't get it twisted. You know what I'm saying? Like, so that same person that was kicking indoors, that was selling weed by the pound, that was running nightclubs, like, and, and moving work, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, though I've, I've suppressed, I've, I'm a new creature. If yeah, any yeah. man being Christ, a new creature, yeah. like, I'm there. But it's like, don't get it twisted. Like, I still need to stay in alignment. Yeah. I still got the edge, so I'm really be seeking the face of God in the morning to get my assignments. Yeah. So now I know how to talk to my wife. If she says something crazy, if she talking spicy, I know how to deal with my kids. I know how to govern my employees and my company. So for me, that time in the morning is pivotal. Yeah to get that alignment right with God, keep my heart, my mind pure, then I work out, then I'm responding to emails, and by the time my team and our company wakes up, I don't know, I already set the game plan for the day. Got it. All right, shed some light to that 45 minutes to an hour. What, mm -hmm. what do you, uh, maybe it's different every day. What does that consist of? It is different every day, because some days I might go to the Bible app, and I might watch the devotional there, do the reading, then the devotional, then the prayer joint, and then kind of flow from there. Okay. Some days I might bring out an actual devotional book I'm reading. Okay. Some days I might be writing the Word. Yeah. Some days I might really need to get poured into, so I might go and watch a sermon online by T.D. Jakes or Dr. Miles Monroe. You know what yep. I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. the late, great, like. Yep. So it just really depends, but I do mix it up. Yeah. It's like yeah. date night. Like yeah, if is, I took yeah. my girl to the same restaurant yeah. and go to the same thing, it'd be boring. <laughs> yeah. But we yeah. gonna switch it up. Sometimes yeah. we gonna go to somewhere Southern or we go somewhere bougie or we gonna catch a flight. Like yeah. you wanna switch it up. Yeah. And so that's how it is with God. It just depends on how I'm feeling. Yeah. But I get up extra early because I don't wanna rush it. Got it. You know, I tell people all the time this, bro, when it comes to spirituality, I feel like it's three levels. It's those people that's like, all right, I'm gonna see God in the morning because I got to do it, and it's the right thing to do. And it's almost like a burden, like a checklist. Yeah. And they feel bad, for, but I'm like, yo, at least you were intentional yeah. about it, right? Yeah. Don't be mad. Don't be feel bad because you got to schedule date night with your spouse. Like, you know, it's something you got to do. Yeah. But then you get to a point where it's just like, okay, I'm looking forward to it. I'm consistent. But then you get to a point where you like, I really value it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's like I want to lay in it. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like I want to really kick it with God. And, I, and for me, the older I get, the more seasoned I get, I need that quiet space, bro. Yeah. Cause when I get up and I get going, and that phone and the WhatsApp and mm -hmm. the Instagram and, and texts and emails and phones ringing and meetings and flights and jumping on stage, just like it'd be so much that's happening. And my wife and my kids need me, and I need to save some bandwidth for them. I need that time of quietness, bro. Yeah. So there'd be sometimes I'll shut it down, bro. My boys he tease me like nine, nine thirty. I'm shutting it down. <laughs> Because I'm, I'm trying to wake up early mm. so I have the mental bandwidth to go throughout the day. Yeah. Somebody else might have the luxury of staying up to 11, 12, 1 o'clock in the morning. Like, that's cool, yeah. man. Hats off to you. But everything I got going on in South Africa, here, all the people depending on me, I, I got to have that time with God. And I need to have a few hours of silence mm -hmm. so I keep my bandwidth and can practice mindfulness. And now I can be more efficient. Yeah, I love yeah. that. Now, is that separate from your personal development, like, like growing as a speaker? Or is that kind of the same time you kind of use that to grow? So, man, I ain't going to lie, bro. So that's the more time I used to grow spiritually. Okay. But the craziest thing, bro, is, you know, some, have you ever, have you ever like, like been reading something and having mm -hmm. a devotion in the morning and then was praying and you, like, fell asleep? Yep. Mm -hmm. So I, I used to feel bad about that. Yeah. But it's like, nah. Like, I'm, I don't think God is like, how, bro, I fell asleep in your presence. Yeah. You feel me? So I feel like, for me, the, the time that I spend... With God, the time I spend in business, it really overlaps. Yeah. But there are times when I'm I'm deep in my word or I'm reading a devotional, or I'm watching a sermon, and bro, God will give me some divine. And I used to be like, okay, well, remind me afterward, because this is your time. He's like, nah, this is our time. Yeah. 
I, I want you to prosper even as your soul prospers. Yeah. So I'll pause that sermon or put the book down, go to my notes, and just to do for the day, I write that thing down and I get right back to the word. That's nice. So when I, bro, when I, bro, I cannot so explain it, you, yeah, yeah. it just hits me. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it happens every morning. Wow. So now I'm formulating a whole new message in this corporate space. I'm giving a presentation actually this weekend at our mastermind, a speech I've never given before. It came to me last night wow. and more stuff came to me this morning. So in my time with God, like I'm trying to read and study Abraham, but all these other divine insights is coming to me. So I'll pause, jot that down, and then I'll go deeper into it later. Yeah. Yeah, that's the hack for me, bro. Yeah. And I'll be telling folk like, yo, I really ain't even that smart. People be looking at me like, bro, how'd you do this? How'd you build this? I'll just be taking my cues from God. Yeah. I tried it my way for a long time, bro. I was struggling. I tried it Yahweh's, boy. I start winning. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Facts. Yes. Yeah, I love that. I love yeah. that. All right. So now we talked, we touched on being a husband, mm -hmm. right? And I've noticed a lot of entrepreneurs sometimes struggle with relationships like sometimes business yeah, is good it's hard yeah relationships are a challenge and i wouldn't say just entrepreneurship but i this is for entrepreneurs so yeah, i want to talk to sure. them any tips right, let's talk to men first about like how you can be better to your spouse or your wife or your significant other as a man to lead the family just mm -hmm. any any type of advice you have for men yeah so the first thing i would do to tell men to be a better husband a better spouse a better a father parent um a better leader is to heal within Okay. So I think the most genius thing I did was I just I tackled and really focused on my own healing because mm -hmm. it was traumas, it was brokenness, it was yeah. insecurities within me that nobody knew about but me and God. And there's some stuff I was even blind to. Wow. And it didn't even come out till counseling. Mm -hmm. Like one of my favorite scriptures of the word, bro, it says that there's safety in a multitude of counsel. Yeah. You've heard that. So it's yeah, like the more sure. people we get counsel from, the best, safest position we put ourselves in. Yeah, absolutely. So as I begin to get insight in counseling and I've been getting to grow internally, mm -hmm. Now I can be a better husband. Now I can be a better father. Now I can be a better entrepreneur, a better business owner. Mm -hmm. And so for me, I would tell I would tell people it starts within mm -hmm. to make sure that they're in the best place internally. Yep. Now you have now you can give your best, you know what I'm saying, yep. to your family. And yep. so for me, I don't want to be super dope on stage, but I'm a trash husband. Yeah, for sure. But marriage is hard. It is. Hard. And let me just say this, because I don't want somebody to be like, see, that's why I ain't getting married. Miss me with that. It can be a very beautiful thing, but you got to grow with it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And me and my wife, there were times, bro, when I was just like, you know what? I've been fighting for this long. I, I ain't got no more in me. And she was like, I got a little bit. I was like, all right, well, let's see. <laughs> and that's why we still rocking today because yeah. she was just like, okay, you've been coming to us all these years, but now that you battle weary, I'm ready to tap in. Everybody don't have that yeah. privilege. Sometimes it's like, hey, when I'm ready to tap out, she ready to tap out, he ready to tap out, and then we tapped out. Like, it happens. But, you know, it's it's a process, and entrepreneurship can be hard alone. Yeah. Bro, marriage can be hard alone. Yeah. Bro, parenting can be hard alone. Mm -hmm. When you put all them suckers together, yeah. that's why I don't be staying up weeknights till 12, 1 o'clock in the morning because I'm like, yo, it's already hard to be a great father yeah. to a daughter that's gorgeous. Yeah. Bro, your daughter's gorgeous. They yeah, like to kick it sure. together, yeah, right? Kick it, yeah. So it's like, it's, it's hard enough to be, you know what I'm saying, faithful to one wife, right, yeah. bro? You know what I'm saying? And not catch attitudes when she's having a rough day. Like, yeah. like those things can be hard enough to grow business. And like, okay, we hit these numbers. Can we hit three million? Can we add more? Like, that's hard enough. Yeah. And so when you put all of it together, I just tell people, man, take your time, pace yourself, do the best you can do with what you have, uh -huh. and then continue to grow from there. And then whatever blind spots you see, like I'm telling you, brother, like the counseling idea internally mm -hmm. was a game changer. Wow. Because I need I need the healing within. Because yeah. I was pointing, like, it's your fault. You got issues. You got some challenges. And I realized, like, oh, okay, I got some too. Well, let me focus on what I can do. Yeah. Let me not try to focus on trying to change you. Let me just focus on being the best husband I can be. Yeah. But a part of my brain is like, but you ain't really giving me what I need and you ain't doing your part. It's 50-50. It's a partnership. And I was like, you know what? No, it's 100-100. Yeah. So let me, let, me not make sh let me make sure that my love and what I show you is not contingent upon what you show me. Because yeah. you might be struggling. But just because you're struggling don't mean that I shouldn't give you my best. Yeah. That's like somebody coming to my restaurant hungry. Oh, you really hungry? Or oh, you ain't got a whole bunch? Well, I ain't going to yeah. give you the best meal. No, nah, I'm still going serve you. Yeah. Even if you right. can't afford to pay for it, you're yeah. hungry. You're famished right now. Yeah. You deserve that. I would want someone to do that for me. Mm -hmm. And so, man, it's been it's been a process and a journey. It has not been easy. Yeah. Uh, but I've grown from it and because of my community, it's kind of helped me thrive in that space. Yeah. So now I got to ask, yeah. right? Because, you know, we got marriage and entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. You have a unique situation mm -hmm. because you're an entrepreneur, you're married, but you also work together. Mm -hmm. Give Can you give any tips or advice because for some people it's like yo they need that, that time when they're working to come back home right y'all are pretty much together a, right. more times than most couples so 
I think that's probably what helped us get through the pandemic. Okay. Because a lot of people didn't realize the issues that they had within their marriage. Mm-hmm. Because it's like, well, eight, nine hours a day. I'm in traffic, driving to work, at work, and then I come home. Yeah. But it's like, you at home all day. But for me, I was... So what people were experiencing during the pandemic, I've been experiencing that for the last 10 years. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, yeah. being at home all day yeah. with my girl, except for when I jump on the flight to speak. Yeah. So the the most genius thing I've recently learned, bro, mm-hmm. is to, to ask the right type of questions. So in the past, if we started a new program, or a new foundation, or a nonprofit, or thought of a big marketing plan, whatever yeah. it was... I would go to my wife and say, hey, babe, do you think this is a good idea? Mm-hmm. She would say, yes, that's brilliant. You think this will make us a bunch more money? It mm-hmm. makes sense? She's like, yeah, let's, okay, I, I think I think that's a good idea. I'll say, babe, let's do it. I never asked, do you got the bandwidth to run it? Hmm. I never asked, like, is this a good time for us? Yeah. I asked, does it make sense? Is it smart? Is it going to generate revenue? Yeah. But I never asked, are you in a good space? Is this a good time? Should we pencil this for the third quarter or for next year? Yeah. But we was in a marriage counseling a few months ago, bro, all, all transparency. My wife, with tears in her eyes, bro, said, honey, I'm 10 years tired. Hmm. I said, dang, 10 <laughs> years tired? I ain't never heard that yeah. before. She said, I'm 10 years tired. I was just like, do tell. Like, mm-hmm. what you mean? She was like, bro, I'm tired. She's like, it's always one program after another campaign, after another company. You know, we got with Alex. We started yeah. a trucking company. Now we yeah. buying up all these 18-wheelers. Yeah. Like, she's like, bro. She was like, and then I realized, like, oh, I will come to you and say, does this make sense? Does this generate revenue? But I never said, is this the best time to pull it off? How mm-hmm. are you feeling internally? So my wife feel like I've been trying to keep up all these years. Yeah, yeah, and, and that can be... Uh, Burnout. Bruh, yeah. absolutely. And so I'm I'm seeing, I'm like, okay, that's why you like a shell of yourself. I be yeah. doing too much. And I'm realizing through my own um, executive coaching, like everybody not wired like me. Yeah. So I'm wired. I process things a little differently, but everybody else don't move like that. Right. And so I really was like, man, babe, I apologize. Like mm-hmm. I failed you as a business owner and as a husband. Yeah. I failed you because I never asked the right type of questions. Yeah. So, so now I'm like, you think this is a good idea? I'm like, but how's the timing? And now she can say, Thank you for asking. I think it's a good time. Or she might say, let's table it for next year, for next quarter, yeah. so I can really give it the focus and attention it needs. Yeah. I and like so, that. and because she's more important yeah. than the work, the, the money, the stages, like she's the most important, her and my kids is the most important thing that I've been blessed to govern over and have. Yeah. And so it's just like, but how do you feel on the inside? And I, I was never asking that. Yeah. I was just out here trying to get it. I was yeah. just out here trying to eat, make an impact. I'm like, this is going to bless people. Yeah. This is going to change lives. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like when we put those 40 kids through college or years ago, you know what I'm saying? And different yeah. friends like you was able to contribute and help out. Yeah. Like, bro, I didn't realize how much work that was. So she's like, yeah, it makes sense. It's something cool to do for your 40th, 40 for 40. Yeah. But I never asked her, it's just a good timing yeah. to set up an international nonprofit and help 40 kids go to the college and partnerships and meeting with the chancellor, the president. Mm-hmm. Like, that was a lot. Was. So now I learn, okay, let me let me tailor it. It's just a good time. Are you in a good space? And that's been a game changer yeah, for us. I love that, man. That's, yeah. that's, that's, that's wisdom. Yeah. In that same line, right? Because being in a relationship comes with its own challenges. Like, you mm-hmm. know, you might have an argument, and then, but now we got to handle some business. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. Or you working all day and then you gotta come back and be like a husband. Right. Instead right, of a business right, partner. Right, right. How have you been able to put on and take off hats and, and kind of navigate through those? So so because of our because of my personality, my wife's personality, it's actually not as challenging as it might be for other people. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Cause we just flow differently, bro. Yeah. Like in my home, bro. Hey, this ain't no cat, bro. We don't be arguing like that. Yeah. We don't be yelling. We, we'll get into it. We'll have some dis- arguments and disputes, but we ain't, like, yelling. Yeah. We ain't cussing. So it ain't toxic like that yeah. to where, you know, we talking and we having to apologize later. I, ain't, I shouldn't have said that. We yeah. not on that. Yeah, yeah. We a lot smoother, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And so for me, whenever we are doing business, it's like it's business, but, you know, it's also flirting. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it's also – but I'm, but for me – I just, I'm wise. I got discernment. I'm like, I really want to deal with this. This is really pissing me off. But I need her to send that invoice. I'm going to play it cool. <laughs> I'm going to play it cool. I'm going to play it cool. I really want to check this, yeah. or I'm going to let that slide, and I'm going to address yeah, it later. Because yeah. I really need you to finish that proposal. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. About that domain we just talked yeah, about. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so that's another thing, too, right? Like, I, I ain't going to. 
poke the bear while the bear is trying to prepare something yeah, for me. So I, so I, I tend to play it cool yeah. and because it's a season, it's a time for everything. Mm-hmm. And so for me, just really being intentional, like, okay, what space are we in? Mm-hmm. And then when, when does shut down work? Yeah. And that's really about the only arguments me and Tracy have. Hmm. It's when it's nighttime and you got your MacBook open. Yeah. And I'm like, yo, miss me with that. That can wait till tomorrow. It really can't. <laughs> I'm like, well, we need to hire somebody then. Yeah. Like, stop playing. Yeah. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Because now you're going to lose yourself and I need you to be a wife now. Yeah. And I need you to be a mother, yeah. but you still own some entrepreneur stuff. I was like, that can wait till tomorrow. You didn't manage your day the right way. Yeah. And so I'm also having to practice what I preach. But it's a, it's a fine line and a balance there, but it's possible to win in that space. It just takes a lot of time and finessing. Yeah, I like it. Yeah. I like it. So you gave one tip on communication is asking, you know, hey, do you have a bandwidth right now? Mm-hmm. Any other tips for communication that, that you found that works for you that maybe somebody else could apply? So the biggest thing I would say, and this is something I've been heavy on all year, is over communicating. Okay. Over communicating. But don't nothing get my the bro, nothing gets my blood boiling more than if I tell you do A, B, C, mm-hmm. like one, two, three, and you don't do it. Yeah. Because I'm just like, why? It's yeah. insubordination. Yeah. It's the, I just can't, <laughs> I don't understand it. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? And so, so I realized with my wife and with our team, People communicate differently. Yeah. But me and my wife are having conversations. We're dealing with some somewhat heavy stuff, personal stuff. Mm-hmm. And I might say something and she takes it and completely reverses another way. Mm-hmm. And it comes up three days later. And I'm like, yo, you've been carrying that all this time? Yeah. That's not what I meant. Yeah. She's like, but what you said was, I was like, but I didn't mean it like that. So I'm like, you know what? <laughs> I ain't got the bandwidth for this. Yeah. So now when we have somewhat heavy conversations, I'm like, babe, what do you hear me saying right yeah. now? Mm-hmm. And then she can say, well, I hear you saying this. And I'm like, that's exactly it. We, yeah. I'm good. Or she, I might be like, oh, my God, praise God. No, that's not what I meant at all. Mm-hmm. She's like, oh, okay. So for me, it's over communicating. And the yeah. same thing within our company. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So now I have Stevon, one of the guys that works for our company. He takes me to the and asks me something. I'm like, bro, you already know that's a no-brainer. We've been doing that for two years. Yeah. He's like, I'm just over communicating. Yeah. I was like, ha, ha, ha. I love it. I like He's that. just like, I just don't want to drop the ball, yeah. and I don't want to assume. Yeah. I'm sure you read the four agreements, yeah. right? Uh-huh. One of them is never assume, right? So I'm telling my team, like, we, know, we don't assume. We know for sure. And if we don't know, we have the humility to ask because it's bigger than us. Yeah. And I ain't going to never be upset. You know, I, I'm a little carpenter. I done made tables. You know that big dining room table we had? The yeah, tins- uh-huh. I made that with my hands, bro, wow. with the wood and everything. That was like a little hobby. Hey, and so, that's nice um, too. right, 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 right. Appreciate that's it. Skill. The chrome legs. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But I learned that in carpentry, measure twice, mm-hmm. cut once. Mm-hmm. Measure yep. twice, cut, cause once you you can't uncut a cut. Yeah, you fact. And yeah. so even in business and relationships, I've just learned to over communicate. So there ain't no room for the enemy to get in and whispering something to somebody, and now they thinking something that you really didn't mean, or yeah. you said something and you really wasn't as clear. I just make a habit of over communicating, and I feel like if you do that in, across all the boards, yeah. Like, I'm telling people in my company, I'm like, hey, send an email and a text depending on the relationship. Yeah. Call them, leave a voice note, then send them an email saying, hey, I also said this in your voice note as well. Please reference, like, over-communicate so that don't nobody come to me and say, oh, I didn't know. Yeah. And that's a part of effective leadership as well and just yeah. also communicating. So, yeah. yeah, bro. Thank you. I like it. Okay. All right. So, we'll, uh, we'll tell you that. That was, that was a lot of – a lot of. Well, I'm going to ask you one more question about that. Okay. Because you, you mentioned counseling. And mm-hmm. in some – Family, some relationships, that's like a cuss word almost. Like, oh, no, all right. You know, right. I don't, we ain't about to be that couple right. counseling. Right. What, like, would you recommend it? What made you make the decision? You know, like, what was that thought process? Because, you know, I know for some people it's like, oh, no, never. We don't need Yeah, that. because, in, 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 you know, you got to figure out where does that <clears> come <throat> from. Yeah. You know, I believe nowadays we're having different conversations when it comes to mental health. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like sure. 10 years ago, bro, people wasn't advocating for sitting down with a counselor or a therapist one-on-one. Yep. We're advocating for it more now. Right. After COVID and the suicide rate is going up, like people are now advocating for that mental health, that mental bandwidth. So I feel like the world is more open to that. But bro, I've been doing marriage counseling from the beginning of our marriage. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, I, and I'm, a, I'm a strong supporter of it. Yeah. If you find the right person, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, I got with a marriage counselor one time, and she was just like, so, okay, how often do you masturbate? And I was just like, I don't. She's like, Jeremy, this is a safe space. I'm like, what are you talking about right now? <laughs> She's like, it can help your prostate. I'm like, you want some freaky stuff. Like, <laughs> So I was told my wife, like, we ain't going back to see her no yeah, more. Yeah, but there are some counselors, yeah. bro, that got a lot of depth. They got a lot of experience, a lot of knowledge. Yeah. But in order for that to really work, you got to first humble yourself. Yep. And realize I do need help. Mm-hmm. People have mentors and yep. coaches in every other aspect. Correct. 
They got fitness coaches. They want to be in the best shape. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? They got cooking coaches. They got coaches for their business or yeah. whatever. They got mentors in all these other areas. Yeah. But when it comes to relationships, the most important thing you have, yeah. you want to go out here and just wing it. Yeah. So I think some of it comes from a place of pride. So mm-hmm. it's like, okay, have some humility. You don't have all the answers. Yeah. And if you really value this relationship yeah. and you want to bring your absolute best of relationship, you'll bring somebody else in to help you kind of navigate that space. Yeah. And so that's that's been my biggest thing, bro, and it's been a game changer for me, mm-hmm. which is why me and my wife have been now married for 13 plus years. Yeah. It's because we got that help throughout the process. Got it. And, and there were times, bro, we would leave in tears or angry. There was times where I'm driving back like, I ain't, we ain't going back there no more. Yeah, fact, but I was yeah. just like, I'm just in my feelings. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then I had to check my motives. Can I talk about that? Yeah, for sure. Bro, I had to check my motives because I was just like, yeah, I want to get a counselor so you can really deal with my wife on some stuff. Because I'm like, she need to be be held accountable because she think can't nobody tell her nothing. Yeah, yeah. Magna cum laude, summa yeah, cum laude, yeah, internship with the FBI. Yeah. Like you think you're so smart, yeah. your stuff stink too. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I'm like, I want to get a counselor so you be held accountable. Yeah. And then God was like, bro, how about you focus on not her growth but your growth because hmm. you ain't perfect. Yeah. You got your own issues. Hmm. You got your own insecurities, your own challenges. Yeah. So he was like, go into it. And then what made my wife open, I'm going to give you fellas some game here. Mm-hmm. For those of you fellas that's like, I want to get some counseling. And then even the wives, the women too. And you're not sure how your husband going to do Take it. Go to him and be like, honey, I want to be the best wife I can be. Hmm. So let's go and get some help. As a couple, because I want to understand you more. Mm-hmm. Bro, that's the position I took. Yeah. If I went to my wife was like, we need some counseling because you tripping. Yeah. Bro, my wife's like, miss me with that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't about to sit in front of somebody just so you can complain about me and have somewhere to vent and that met me. Yeah. But when I say, hey, babe, you deserve the best husband. Mm-hmm. I feel like I'm pretty good. Yeah. But I don't want to be Mr. Next Level Living, but I'm, I'm a decent average husband. I'm in an 8.5. I want to be a 10. Yeah. I want to understand you more. Your heart's desires, how I effectively communicate with you. Mm-hmm. So let's get some help. Let's get some counseling. And now she's more open to it. Wow. So I would always tell people to check their posture <clears throat> and their motives. Yep. And then, um, and then get the help that they need if they really value that relationship. Yeah, yeah. I think that's big. And I, I just shout out, you know, one of our partners at uh, BetterHelp. Um, they got an amazing yeah, program. Yeah. Um, they they partnered with us on a couple episodes, and you know I got to show them some love. So we yeah. got we got a discount code. We'll put it some there somewhere in the bottom for y'all. Tap if you decide you want to do that, I think it's I don't know some kind of percentage off, but BetterHelp.com forward slash RTP. We'll put it in the show notes. Um, I want to talk about speaking now because yeah. that you do that on another level, and I think it's a skill set to not only be able to do it personally, mm-hmm. but now be able to show other people how to do it. Right. How do I go from like, okay, I have this ability to communicate to, hey, how do I not get paid for this gift that mm-hmm. I have? So once you have the audience uh-huh. and you know who it is you're speaking to and you know have an idea of your message, yep. your story, the principles, the takeaways, the things that they need to really add value to their life, now it's a matter of you <clears> letting <throat> people know social media, your website, marketing, LinkedIn, business cards, going to different events, networking, and you get those opportunities. I tell people all the time, get it in as many stages as possible at the beginning. So many people worry about getting paid. It's like, that's going to come, right? But there is a purity of your heart when you're like, you know what, I'll show up and speak for free. I just want to add value. Mm -hmm. I tell people all the time, if you just want to speak, you know what I'm saying? Because you wanted the bag. It's like, I'm going to show you how to secure the bag, but I want you to secure that heart first. Yeah. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. People see my lifestyle like, bro, you got that career from speaking, bro. I want to be a speaker, bro. You should want to be a speaker because you have a story to tell that's going to change somebody's life. Mm-hmm. So I always tell people, like, make sure your motives are in the right place. Yep. And then once your heart is pure and you're like, no, I really do care about people, you're going to be tested because you're going to get a bunch of opportunities to speak for free. Yep. Bro, when I first moved to Atlanta about 19 years ago, I remember I emailed like, 300 schools in the area, bro. Nobody let me come back, and I felt away. Mm-hmm. I was like, man, I'm willing to speak for free. They tripping, and God was like, bro, how dare you? It's an honor for you to speak for free. Yeah. The fact that they would trust you, they're young people with your message. They would trust your audience for free. Just because you should be getting paid, yes. But the fact that they will trust you, like, it's still a privilege even to speak for free. Yeah. So now I've learned, and I don't mind sharing <clears> with your audience <throat> some game on how they can benefit from speaking for free. Okay. First off, you get to perfect your craft. Yep. So the more you speak for free, the better you're going to get 
in presenting and flowing. And now you ready to get paid five, ten, twenty, then forty thousand dollars to speak because you perfected your flow. Right. right. There's a bag there, bro. And we can That's talk about bag. that too. Okay. Then you have so it's like, okay, that. Now you get referrals. Yeah. Because you don't know who there is gonna like your message and want to refer you for somebody else. Okay. Then you get exposure. Yeah. I, I done I done did events for organizations for free and someone there was like, That's amazing. I want to book you for my conference or event. We got a twelve thousand dollar budget. Now years ago I used to be like twelve grand, oh my God. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Now nah, I won't need the crib for it. But there was a time <laughs> yeah. when I was like, I'm crying like God, you're so faithful. But as you grow, yeah. you expect more because yeah. you can't make demands if you're not in demand. Mm. Jeez. Yeah, you can't. can't you're, demands, you can't make demands demand. if you're not in demand. So it's like getting Jeez. in front of as many people as possible. And now the more stages That's you want, <laughs> the more stages you want for free. Yeah. The more you speak and the more popular you get, you get in the pictures. Remember we yeah. talked about investing in your business. Yeah. You get the pictures. You get the photos. You get the B-roll. You get the testimonials recorded. Now you can weave some stuff together. Now they see you in all these stages. They think like, yo, you worth eighty five hundred or thirty thousand, whatever you charge. Mm. And so, get as many opportunities to speak for free. Get the referrals. Get the exposure. Get the B roll. Get the testimonials. Get the footage. And then lastly, um, there's a thing called the in kind letter. So Jay, if you come and speak for my organization. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, man, thank you for speaking for my foundation, bro. I don't have a budget, but you did it off the love because, you know, our money is no good to each yeah. other. I could give you an in-kind letter that said Justin Owens, you know what I'm saying, spoke for our event for free. He waived his fee of $25,000 and, and, and volunteered his time. Now, every time you speak for free, you can get an in-kind letter. And then you turn that into whoever prepares your taxes at the end of the year. And those are major tax breaks. Bro, I'm thinking all the years I was speaking for free. Bro, I, I, I got a couple of in-kind letters. Oh, like for sure. <laughs> and there is nobody, bro, that's going to say that you spoke for free. That's going to say, no, I'm going to give you an in-kind letter. Yeah. And the only thing is they have to put in the letter that you waived your fee of $8,500, $40,000, whatever your price is. Mm -hmm. You put that in there. And then you say you get 10, 15 of those, and you're looking like, man, I, that's $230,000. The government's looking like you put that back into the economy, like you wow. gifted that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And so there can be some major tax breaks there. Man, that was a play. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I just really, I'm like, what? Yeah. I, invoice is going out. We're going to. Oh, for sure. We're going to say this part right yeah. here. We, and this template, this you can Google in kind letter. It's template. How do you spell it? In kind, like I N. Okay. The in kind letter, yeah. Hey, that is a, that is yeah. a part. There All we right. go. So, Let's talk about the income potential of a speaker because, again, you know, some people know it's like, okay, I want to do it, but how does the money work? How do I know what to charge? What's the income potential for somebody doing it? So the average person that's just starting in the corporate space mm -hmm. is between seventy five hundred and ten thousand dollars. Okay, that's the, that means you're not really booming, you're yeah. not really popular. Yep. The average company is like, hey, for somebody that's decent, I'm yeah. gonna pay this. Okay, and the educational space is anywhere from three to five thousand dollars. Okay, so that little middle school or that high school you speak at, yeah. they got anywhere from three to five thousand dollars. Now. You know, as you get higher up, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying, they pay you more. Yep. I remember years ago, I was speaking for this organization, I think like 2017, this organization wanted me to speak, and I think at 2017, my price was maybe like 15 grand or 20 grand, and they was like, we don't have it in the budget, but guess who they booked? Dr. Cornell West. Mm. Guess how much he charged? How much? 30 grand. Wow. Guess who was in their feelings? Yeah. I was. <laughs> Well, I'm thinking like you ain't had twenty for me. Yeah. But the same year you bring him in and pay him thirty. Yeah. But it's this thing called perceived value. Hmm. Yep. For him, they see him on TV. They hear college professor, best selling yeah. author. I'm just like, oh, okay. Yeah. So though other organizations will pay me twenty, that one here in Atlanta, and I'm like, I ain't jump jump on a flight in a hotel. Holla yeah. at your boy. Mm -hmm. I do it for fifteen. Yeah. What's up? They was just like, ah, <laughs> we ain't got it. Yeah. But you pay him double. Mm -hmm. So that helped me understand perceived value. So I always tell people that's why it's important. Don't eat your seeds. When you get speaking opportunities and they pay you something, don't go and just spend that. Invest that back in your business. Every stage you're on, I tell all the people in our community, in our lead program, every stage you're on, get it filmed, get it documented, testimonials, pictures, because it's going to make a more robust speaker reel. Yeah. People don't want to book speakers who are trying to book, be speakers. They want to book speakers who are already speaking. Mm. And the way you build that demand, again, you can't make demands if you're not in demand. Yep. So the way you build that demand is the more footage you have of, on stage. Now, people are followers, bro. Yeah. People are like, I want you speaking to my event. You spoke for Chick-fil-A. You spoke yep. for here. You spoke for Mutual Omaha. Well, I want you for my company, IBM. Like, that's kind of the way it goes. And then you begin to scale your price. And this is what I tell people. When you look at your numbers and you're like, yep, I've been asking for $7,500. When you get to a point where 50% of your gigs say, yes, I got it. 
There are going to be some that say, oh, I don't have it. Yeah. I got 5,000, 4,000, whatever. But when you find that 50% of the engagements do have that budget you're requesting, that's when you scale. Mm. Okay. I'm gonna get, you know, I'm going to give one more hack, man. Right. I'm going to give one more hack, Please. bro. And this is something I typically will only give to the folks that's like in our community, but we mm -hmm. partners, right? Yeah. Bro, on your website, mm -hmm. after you fill out the booking form, the last thing you should put is estimated budget of speaker. You let them tell you what their budget is. Yeah. Bro, that's how I jumped from like 10 grand to 20. <laughs> Get a little thief like, oh. Right. I was like, okay. And I remember when that first request came in, because my wife tried to play me. She was like, they only got 2000 I was like, how you know? Because it wasn't a comma there. Yeah. It just said 2000. Zero, zero, mm -hmm. So she thought 2000 I was like, there could be 20 And lo and behold, they had 20000 I was like, oh, price goes up. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then I saw my little boy, um, Jackson, about a year ago, he was I was leaving the house, and he grabbed my leg and was crying. and was like, Daddy, don't leave me. Mm. Bro, that messed me up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It was a quick Dallas trip. I'll yeah. be back by 6 that evening. I was fly in, speak, fly right back. But just my little boy, tears, was like, Daddy, don't leave me. I text my assistant. I jumped in with the driver. I text her. I was like, your price go up. Mm -hmm. 35000 now. I don't leave the house for less than that. Wow. You know what I'm saying? It's like, and if you ain't got it, I ain't really trying to be speaking five times a week anyway. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I just need, give me one. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm Gucci. Right. You feel yeah. me? And I don't feel bad about not taking some of those lower amount gigs because I got a whole community of people I can pass those to. Yeah. So somebody going to eat off of that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But I got to a point where I was just like, that price goes up. So as you grow and as you scale mm -hmm. and as you add more value and then that thing called perceived value, people are able to pay more. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I think the biggest I've ever gotten paid um, was fifty five thousand for one speech? Wow! But I have had an organization pay me a hundred thousand, and I spoke three times over two days. And it was actually one hundred and ten grand. So, <laughs> extra you know, ten, oh, extra ten, ten matter, matter. <laughs> for sure, for sure. So you know, so you kind of you set your you set your price and you stick with it from there. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. That. And yeah. then you 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 have the liberty yeah. of declining gigs and saying okay. My price is fifteen thousand, but you only have ten. Okay, I rock with you. Or my price is five thousand, but you only have two. Mm -hmm. I'm like, take it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But you got to keep your heart pure. Yeah. And sometimes I tell my assistant before we give a discount, what's the story behind this organization? What are their values? Yeah. Because if there's a really strong alignment, I might make some concessions, yeah. especially if I could fly in and fly out yeah. or come right back. Yeah. So that's what I would say. It's easy to scale, but you always want to go up with your price and never down. Got it. So yep. you never want to be like, I'm 10 grand. Then be like, actually, I'm seven now, because that yeah. means you're not popping. So yeah. you always want to scale up from okay. there. Yeah, I like that. Yep. Talking about travel, right, again, as a married man, how do you make sure, because, you know, there are temptations out there. Oh, right? bro. There are people try stuff. It's a lot of stuff. We all we, we grown, so we know what happens out there. What are some things that you do or things you put in place to protect yourself <laughs> or to not even be in environments? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to tell you a funny story, bro. So I went to one city. I think I was in, I feel like I was in Fort Lauderdale. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, the the lady at the counter, I checked into the hotel. Mm -hmm. um, nice hotel. Uh, bro, she was, bro, she was, bro, she was gorgeous, mm -hmm. bro. Brazilian. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I'm just thinking like... <laughs> And so she literally checks me all in, Mr. Anderson, and she was just like, on your Instagram? And I was just like, I really don't want to give you that. But I ended up giving it to her. Yeah. And, bro, she was just like, you know what? I get off at 10. Can I meet you with a bottle of wine? And I was like, you can't. I'm actually about to call my wife. But thank you, though. <laughs> She's like, oh, I'm so sorry. So because I'm so vocal about my wife and my yeah. relationship, that, that keeps a lot of them at bay. But then there are some that's turned on by that. Yeah, They're like, sure. oh, girl, he faithful, yeah. too. So. It's one of them things, man, where I, I shut it down. Yeah. Like, I don't have to. I don't, I'm the type of person, bro, because I don't do well with distractions. Yeah. I still got ADHD, bro, mm -hmm. even as a child. Like, But it's a gift now. So it's like somebody slide my DMs. It's like, yo, I, I'm going to mute you. Because mm -hmm. I used to have some chicks I used to go to school with that are models now. And I'm just like, if I unfollow you, now you're like, why you unfollow me? You think yeah. you're better than me? I'm like, I don't have the bandwidth for that. Yeah. I'm just going to mute you yeah, yeah, so I'll smart. never see your post. Yeah, and then I got my team that manage all my DMs. Yeah. So for me, I, I try to govern my eyes yeah. um, and just make sure I keep my eyes and my heart pure yeah. to stay focused on what really matters because the distractions are out here, bro. Yeah, they are. Yeah, yeah. Sure. And, and anybody can <clears> fall. <throat> yeah. And I used to feel back in the day like, I would never. I'm this man of God. And it's like, yeah, you are, bro, but people can fall. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? The Bible said that God viewed David like a man after my own heart. But when he was seen Bathsheba with the sons <laughs> on, on the breath, yeah. he was yeah. just like, I need that right yeah. there. You know what yeah. I'm saying? And so I just try my best to avoid those distractions. I put those safeguards and filters in place yep. and um, and go from there, bro. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. I love it. Um, I always have a section 
and the show is called Breakdown of Breakthroughs. I mm-hmm. believe everybody in their journey will have some type of breakdown. A lot of times we're gonna have a lot of them, just so y'all know. Sure. There's gonna be multiple breakdowns in different sure. stages and different types of breakdowns. But I believe in every breakdown, uh, there's a lesson that you learn, and mm-hmm. if you learn a lesson, you can break through and get to the next level. Mm-hmm. Have you had any breakdowns in your journey? And if so, would you mind sharing one or w- w- whatever one you would want to share and how you were able to break through? Um, yeah, man, my my biggest um, breakdown, looking at my marriage and relationship and business, mm-hmm. um, my biggest breakdown and breakthrough was with my wife. Okay. Business, you know, when I first started speaking, you know, and to quit my job and went full time, like it just slowly progressed. Now yeah. it was just beautiful, right? Mm-hmm. But there was a time when it was it was always an up and up. Yeah. I probably struggled after I quit my job that first year or two mm-hmm. I struggled, but after that it was just like Gucci. And then yeah. by twenty sixteen it was just like, Oh, I'm gonna be wealthy. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> yeah, yeah. so that actually was was pretty smooth. Yeah. Um, but my breakdown, the breakthrough, the biggest thing was with my wife. Okay. Um, she experienced um, a lot of loss in her family. Yeah. Like in one a year and a half, she lost her aunt, who lived across the street from her mom. Yeah. She lost her grandmother, her mother, and her father, bro. Wow. Like she come from a small town in Kentucky, so like your whole family in like a year and a half ends up dying. Wow. And so it was like a cloud of our home. Then my wife got sick, and she was diagnosed with fibromyalgia, then endometriosis, and adenomyosis. We lost two babies, but she was on all these different medications. Wow. We ended up having to go um, vegan, plant-based. That's the only thing that would like heal her body. So I went from eating juicy, fat ribeyes, you know yeah. what I'm saying, and, and, uh, and all of that to yeah. now tofu. Wow. You know what I'm saying? But I was desperate, and so we were in a really dark season. And because emotionally and physically, she was just in a dark place. I'm, but my love language is physical touch. Yeah. I don't need words of affirmation. You know what I'm saying? I don't need gifts and acts of service. Touch me. me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> and so because we were lacking the intimacy in that season because she was in such a dark place and she was just kind of holding on herself, you know what I'm saying? God had me fast for my wife. Hmm. So I went through a nine-month fast, bro, no sex. Hmm. And then I was just like, I need to keep my mind and my heart and my temple pure, so no porn, no masturbation. Like, I just got to be locked in. That's when I really started. That's when I started going to sleep at 3. <laughs> I was on ET time at that point. I was yeah. like, I got to get up at 3 o'clock now. Yeah. I got to exercise these demons yeah, inside me. You know what I'm saying? But that was, that was nine months. And I didn't plan for it being nine months. Wow. God was just like, bro, your wife is hurting. Your wife is struggling. And because she is not able to be what you need her to be in this season, it's breaking your heart. Mm-hmm. Now you got resentment growing in your He was like, release her. Can't you see her pain? Can't you see she's struggling? Are you that selfish? And I'm like, dang, bro. I mean, no, but kind of. You know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. So I went through that and I didn't realize it was <clears throat> going to be nine months. It just ended up being nine months. And I feel like it was symbolic of like a pregnancy. Yeah. You carry a baby for nine months and then we gave birth to a different type of marriage. And, and it's still evolving. Yeah, yeah. And so that was our biggest. Bro, and I, bro, I pride myself on that, bro. Yeah. Like, for it's me fun. to accomplish that is like yeah. PhD stuff. Like, I just did a tour in Afghanistan. Yeah, yeah, you fact. know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. No, that's, that's... To, to not go to other alternate routes yeah. to just really fight through that thing. Like, that was the most mentally and emotionally taxing. Then I still got to stand on stage. Then I still got to avoid the yellow bones yeah. and the, the thickies. And, the, yeah. and I'm just thinking like, man. And So that's hard. Yeah. Mentally taxing. But that was my breakdown. But my breakthrough was to see where we are on the other side. Yeah. So I tell people all the time, and people wonder, like, yo, Jay, where you get your passion from? Like, where you get the anointing from? The crushing. Hmm. Where you get oil from olives, but you got to crush those olives. Hmm. So people that's like, bro, I want the anointing. I want that passion. It's like, bro, do you want the pain I went through, though? Yeah. Do you want the suffering I went through to be the man that I am? Like, that thing is hard. Hard, bro. Yeah. But on the other side, like you, if something building inside you, your shoulders are broader, you get stronger, your back is stronger, like you're able to lift more, you're able to handle more, you're able to be trusted with more. And so that process, I had to die to myself every single day, bro. But the breakthrough from it and how I'm able to help other men and other relationships and people within my company and just able to grow and I can be trusted with more. Mm. Bro, I believe God will bless you with what he can trust you with. Yeah. 
You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, so just staying in that course was one of the most challenging things I ever did. But now we're on the other side. Yeah. Now she's happy. She healthy. She holds. She working out. I promise you, bro. Every week she order a new body envy suit from Helani. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like every week, I'm like, that's yeah. fire. Bro. Yeah. You put it together with the J's and yeah. the Yeezys, yeah. right? She's a whole different season now. But that was a very painful moment. Yeah. We went from not having kids, and I'm saying they're not gonna have kids, and not having a beautiful boy and a girl. Yeah. You, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so it's yeah. like. That was our breakdown, but eventually we got that breakthrough. And yeah. for me, I had to run the play. Yeah, yeah. And no. God was like, seek me every single day. Yeah. Get up well, a little bit earlier, mm -hmm. quiet all this noise, yeah. just lock in with me. Mm -hmm. He was just like, bro, you just view this like you want some special ops, yeah. a special covert training. I'm thinking like, bro, I've, I've been doing right. I ain't, I ain't pulling no kick doors. I ain't robbing yeah. folk no more. Yeah. I'm, I ain't stealing cars. Yeah. Like, I'm a good person now. Yeah. I ain't asking for no crazy, freaky stuff. Just show me some love. He's like, bro, your wife is hurting right now now yeah so i need you to be strong enough long enough to get that breakthrough yeah I and i just kept running the play every single day seeking his face and i'll tell you bro it would take hours mm -hmm. to get my heart right i have to release resentment because even though i know she was struggling i'm struggling too yeah i yeah. got pains you know what i'm yeah. saying like physical mental emotional yeah you know what i'm saying and then my mom had me at 16 years old being so young yeah you know what i'm saying it's like it's certain things i'm sure i needed from her yeah you know what i'm saying that i didn't get because she was young she we was in survival mode like yeah. all of that makes us who we are to Day. Mm -hmm. It's like now I have a wife, and this one thing that I'm only supposed to get from her, I can't get, and I don't feel valued, I don't feel loved. Like, mm -hmm. bro, it's like the world was caving in on me, but God was like, she's hurting right now. Mm -hmm. And so I had to run the prey, I had to seek him first, I had to be selfless, and then our breakdown gave us the breakthrough. Yeah, I love that, man. Yeah, man. That's that's powerful. Yeah, bro. This is this is gonna sound like a probably a weird question, but I'm gonna ask it anyway. You say God told me, right? How do you know God's telling you that? Yeah, so that's a good question. I get it often, actually. It's actually a really good question, bro. So I'm on this prayer line. ET started this prayer line probably 20 years ago. Uh -huh. So I've been a part of this prayer line for like 10 years. And so some guys you talk to so much, you can hear them chuckle or clear their throat, mm -hmm. and you know who it is. Yeah. Like there's people all over the country. We got sometimes 200 men on the line just on mute, but you can hear somebody laugh or chuckle. But I, because I talk to you so much, mm -hmm. it's like I know your voice. Yeah. It's the same way with God, bro. It's like the more time you spend with him, mm -hmm. his word says, my sheep hear my voice yeah. and they follow me. Mm -hmm. Right? So it's like the more time you spend with, I've never heard it audibly. Yeah. For the record, that would freak me out, right? <laughs> nice. If he said, my son Jeremy, I, <laughs> what up? Big yeah. dog, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I've never heard it audibly, but I can, I feel it internally. I think it was Moses that was like, hey, don't, don't talk to me no more. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we good. <laughs> I'm good, bro. Like, they're rolling yeah. thunder, like, yeah. send an angel yeah. or something. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Little, you know, translate for yeah, sure. Yeah. But for me, bro, it's just always in that quiet time. And you, you know, you, and let me tell you something. We have, you know, they say uh, if it was a Harvard study that says that the average human, eighty percent of their thoughts every day are negative, hmm. and ninety-five percent of their thoughts are repetitive. Wow. So when we think of a lot of the negative thoughts we have, mm -hmm. that comes from our own brokenness or the enemy whispering, yeah. you know, saying negativity mm -hmm. to us. So, but whenever I hear a voice that says, apologize to your wife, mm -hmm. bro, that don't just come from me, yeah. especially when I know I don't want to do it. Yeah. So I, I can, I can, so when I have that yeah. time in prayer and I meditate and I'm praying and I'm reading and God is like, you got to do this. Or God is like, check in with this person. I just like, I, yeah. I literally would hear those thoughts like, check in with J.O. He's struggling this morning. Yeah. I'd be like, J.O., just think about you, bro. You good? You're like, actually, bro, I was just struggling. I'm like, dang, God, you yeah. crazy. But yeah. the more time you spend, that's what I would tell people all the time. Mm -hmm. I think the biggest lie that the enemy has people thinking or believing is that their prayers don't leave the ceiling. Mm -hmm. It's like, nah, when you pray them prayers and you really believe in those mm -hmm. prayers and you really have faith, them prayers, it might not come through right away, but it's yeah. going to come in, in due time. Yeah. And so, yeah, bro, for me, I just I just try to keep my heart pure, stay in alignment with God. And it's like, okay, what moves you want me to make? Like, mm -hmm. how am I going to make these moves? And I'm asking, mm -hmm. and he'll always tell me. Yeah. And then sometimes if it's not clear... Now I'm going to tap in with friends. Correct. Or I might hit somebody that I know has a connection with God or somebody that I look up to. Mm -hmm. It's like, hey, what do you think about that? Yeah. And then they, and so sometimes God's voice might be through them. And then sometimes it's my wife, bro. Hmm. Can I tell you how I lost a whole bunch of money because I enlisted my wife? Wow. All right, real quick story, real quick. So my wife, before the pandemic hit, she was like, babe, you know, a time might come where you might get tired of traveling and speaking. You should create some online training courses yeah. and just have it available. So if an organization, university wants to book you, you can just, for a fraction of the price, you could just send them this speech and they can just play that. And I was like, nobody doing a pre-recorded speech. I speak yeah. live. Mm -hmm. talking about Facts. the pandemic hit. And I was like, babe, you know what? 
I think I should record some professional development training. She was like, don't do that. Yeah. I was like, do what? She was like, don't do that. Nigga, you yeah. know what I yeah. told yeah. you a year ago. I was like, dang, you're right. That was some inception stuff. Yeah. And so I put together a program, bro, and we sell it for $1,000 each and 5000 as a pop. And I told my team, I was like, yo, I'm getting 400 people trying to book me per year. Some of them don't have the budget. I was like, yo, if you sell... Uh, five of these a month, you know what I'm saying, at 5000 like, that's an extra $25,000 a month. Like, and as we scale, we got to a point of making a half a million a month, and I never have to leave the crib. Hmm. And so if I listened to my wife a year prior, yeah. we, we could have been eating that. Yeah. So I say all that to say, bro, oftentimes the voice of God sounds like the voice of my wife. Wow. That's, that's cool. like that wisdom. Like, yeah. so when the word says, you know, when the man finds a wife, he finds a good thing in favor mm -hmm. with the Lord. Like, oftentimes it's that wisdom. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Even if some some guys are like, bro, not my wife, even though she got an attitude, <laughs> there is some wisdom that flows from yeah, her. Yeah, no, absolutely. You know what I'm saying? And so being in alignment um, with that, um, I think, can be key. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, yeah. Man. And you said something that was big, too. Um, it was just like being able to monitor your thoughts. That's important. Yeah. Um, I forget what, oh, it was uh, Science Again, Rich, it said, the hardest thing to do is to think what you want to think. Because mm. we have so many things that come at us in day-to-day -day life. And I'm listening to you, and it's like, you actually are doing the thing that you're supposed to do to counteract that, which is, mm -hmm. yo, let me take some time and put something else in. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, you know, you're just taking stuff that's whatever life give you, whatever, whatever you open up, whatever Instagram gets you, that's what right. you get. You know what I'm saying? Whatever somebody takes you, that's what you get. Instead of taking time and saying, okay, let me, let me think what I want to think. Let me hear what I want to hear. And then, you know, like you said, let me protect myself by not looking at what I don't need to look at. For sure. And I think all of us can can learn from your example in that. And, and uh, But the worst is it best. Um, um, to think of whatever is true, yeah. whatever is noble, whatever is lovely, whatever yeah. is kind, whatever yeah. is pretty. Like, think of those things. Yeah. Because it starts with the brain. Correct. I tell people what you think is what you say. Yeah. What you say is what you do. Mm -hmm. What you do on a regular basis becomes a habit. Mm -hmm. Your habits create your character, and your character determines your destiny. Mm -hmm. But it all starts with your thoughts. Yeah. So if we can just master our minds, we can master our lives. Yeah, I love it. I yeah, love man. It. Um, well, you, you gave us a lot of game. I, and I know if you're looking to be a speaker, just the gems that you gave today right, right, right. for free, right. can, oh, I can only imagine what right. a person would get for some of the things you provide. So if I'm looking to become a speaker, uh, one, to follow you, but also to find out about the programs you have, could you give us some information on that? Yeah, um, so next level. So if you know E.T., Dr. Mm -hmm. Eric Thomas, yep. uh, E.T. the Hip Hop Preacher, so me and him came together and Inky Johnson. Oh, that's my guy. And we yeah. got the oh, new yeah. Next Level Speakers Academy. I love it. So you, people can go to nextlevelspeakersacademy.com and, um, and join our community, bro. We have yeah. weekly coaching calls. I got a course. Inky got a master class course. E.T. got a course on speaking. Like, wow. there is no other program in the world that has the type of training and coaches and access to us on a weekly basis yeah. that you can get and get the game. Yeah. And, uh, bro, I want to brag on, I want to brag on um, what, two of our people. Our, Atia just got a contract for $75,000. Wow. For one school district, professional development. I said, how much time is it going to take you? She's going to take about an hour of my time a week. I'm like, wow. what are we talking about? Wow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. $75,000. And that's just one little contract she got. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then we got um, one guy that came to our conference. He was on stage with me, E.T. He won the, the Diamond Award. Yeah. But he did $240,000. And he's not even 27 years old yet. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's possible. But everybody in our community, they got a heart for people. Yep. They got a heart for God. They got a phenomenal story. Yep. But now we show them, it's like, okay, you got a heart for God. You got a heart for people. Yep. But now we're going to show you, you know what I'm saying? You got a heart of gold. We're going to show you how to have a bank account of gold. Yeah, like, you know what yeah. I'm saying? We're going to show you how to monetize <laughs> yeah. that message. So, yeah, I would say tap in with the Speakers Academy. Yeah, I love it. I love yeah, it. Yeah, man. Well, man, I appreciate you coming. Appreciate through, you, man. bro. This, this is great. Man. I learned a lot today. I'm going to watch this again. Right. Make sure I send them letters off. Some of y'all, my friends, y'all about to get sure. these, uh, these, these invoices. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We sure. donate a lot. Uh, but now, nah, man, it's a uh, special, um, and you know, obviously, you know, phil philanthropy is something that's big for you. Yeah. Um, I kind of rap on that. Uh, what made you transition to say, okay, I'm making money? But at what point did you start getting into philanthropy and giving back in a, in an organized manner? Yeah. So <clears throat> I, I feel like I started this thing called the Grace Tour. Yep. Where um, God bless us with a Mercedes Benz Sprinter van. We got a wrap. Me and my crew would travel all over the country, and we go to schools and churches, group homes, organizations, and speak. Um, but it started then, my daughter, Jewel, was just like, Daddy, it's a lot of homeless people. Yeah. You know, we'd be in 
Philly and Houston and just major cities. So we started having these Ziploc bags that would have like socks and granola bars and bottled yeah. water and soap. And we would start giving away. So we started there before we was even making money. Yeah. So our heart was always there. But I believe God will bless you with what he can trust you with. And I believe that he blesses you to be a blessing to others. Yeah, absolutely. And so as we begin to grow and generate more revenue, we did a campaign where we started sending teachers across America on free cruise vacations. I sent a limo to their school to pick them up. I wow. paid for them and their spouse or best friend a, a round trip flight and paid for the whole cruise and a limo back home just to say thank you. Because it's like you start making all this bread. And this yeah. is like, you know, say Uncle Sam won't take it or I can disturb, decide what I want to do with yeah. it. And that's before I even knew the wise part. I was just blessing folks. Yeah. And then, you know, we begin to grow and evolve. And then um, we feed right now through our foundation a thousand people per week in South wow. Africa. And, um, and we just sponsored two years ago, 40 kids through college, and they just, well, a little over two years ago, and they're, they're near completing it, and we just put another 20 kids in at the College of Cape Town. Wow. And That's so cool. I just kind of feel like the more resources I'm blessed with, the more I can put out here in the world, because I don't really need much, bro. I yeah. come from nothing, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I live a great life, um, and I'm living below my means, but I still want to it's, I want to bless other people and put other people in the yeah. best positions yeah. possible. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I so it. I love it. That's key for us. Yeah. So just make sure I catch this. The Next Level Speakers Academy dot com. Mm -hmm. Okay. The, your uh, nonprofit is nextlevelliving.org. Nextlevelliving.org. And they can mm -hmm. find you on Inst everywhere. One Jeremy Anderson. One Instagram, Jeremy Anderson. all that. Yep, yeah. there we go. All right, man. Well, listen, y'all, y'all uh just got a chance to hear from one of the best that I know um as a speaker. Uh, anytime that you know we have people coming to the show, I always like to make sure we, you know, bless them with something. And so uh, we all know we got new ACOs, you know, top, you know, brand Come on, you know what I'm saying? Plus to run the place, so we got a couple, you know, gifts. Uh, yeah, got for me. I like gifts, through. and uh, you know, we we'll get a couple of things from us uh, to you. You know, yes, sir. The time out and uh, you know, came through uh, for us. And, Woo! A couple pieces in there. Books, merch. Yeah. Well, that's, a, that's next level. Y <laughs> socks. <laughs> socks, you know what I'm saying? Hats, beanies, books. Man, yeah. thank you, bro. Nah, I appreciate it. And you. let me say something. This book here, and it matches the brand. Yeah, yeah, Come yeah. on, dog. I see it all, man. Look, detail, thank you, bro. You know what I'm nah, that's I, a lot nah. of this robust. Thank you, yeah, bro. Yeah, no, nah, absolutely. I appreciate you taking the time because, uh, you know, not only helped me today, but a lot of people. And, uh, you absolutely. know, gift keeps giving, bro. So absolutely. Looking forward to uh, continue to be a part of your journey as well. Yes, sir. But, appreciate so listen, y'all. Y'all got a chance to hear from my guy, Jeremy Anderson, giving you the top plays on how to become not just a speaker, mm -hmm. but getting paid, but become a better man, become a better spouse, uh, and a better entrepreneur. So, We'll see you guys on the next episode. Run the play. What's going on? Listen, make sure you guys go to runtheplaystore.com. Get your official run the play gear. We talk about shirts, socks, jackets for everybody that's run the play all across the world. Are you ready? We're gonna run the yeah. play. Let's Do you go. know what it's like to come for nothing at all? But every day you just wanting it all.